So I'm going to be talking a little bit about the differences between Enneagram 1, the Reformer, or um, the Crusader, and Enneagram 8, which is called most often the Challenger. Um, and as I said in my intro video, not often are these types um, misidentified between. Um, but I do think they do have a lot of commonality um, and a similar like root system, which is that um, grounding in the body and in um, the instinctive center or um, the gut center, but also really that both of them have some anger issues. Um, from there, those dif uh, the differences are really greater than the similarities. But So that's what we're going to talk about. Um, one of my favorite phrases, I think, that describes um, kind of the difference between a 1 and an 8, and an eight is it's something that I read, um, and I wish I could even source this or remember where I read it, but um, the phrase that an Enneagram 1 is an 8 in chains. Um, and from my study of the two types, that is really this profound statement, which means that ones are ruled by their sense of justice and their sense of black and white and their sense of right and wrong. Um, and that is really one of the main disconnects between a one and an eight. And that, um, I guess the way that I would like to put it is that ones um, are moral where eights are reactive. Um, and not that one couldn't be moral and reactive, but um, those are, each of them have that trait that the other doesn't. So a lot of times I think that we might look at a one as an eight in chains because they both have this anger within them, um, but ones, with another analogy that I've heard, are like a boiling pot of water where they are trying to keep the lid on Whereas an eight, on the other hand, may be a boiling pot of water, but they could care less if they keep the lid on. Um, there's not that um, there's not that attempt at social decorum that ones make because they care so much about um, what is right and what is good, um, and that involves what other people think of them. And um, we know that eights do not struggle with this, um, mostly because whereas ones are concerned with good and right and justice, eights are mostly concerned with their own survival and their own independence. And a lot of times that um, means that their anger manifests through domination of their environment. Uh, a lot of times I used to, like to use this analogy of a coffee shop. And this is regardless of type. We would say X type, how would they respond to this scenario in a coffee shop, which is um, that when you're in a coffee shop and you've just ordered your coffee and you're waiting to get it. And the barista might be doing their job, they're making their coffee, and someone who may also be waiting for their coffee, perhaps in front of you, um, just is a total jerk to the barista and just lays into them over something silly like their latte's not at 105 degrees or um, there aren't enough pumps of syrup, whatever it is. but. Um, I believe a one and an eight in this scenario would really respond differently and for different reasons. Um, we could say both a one and an eight might engage. Um, both a one and an eight might choose not to engage. And we could say that of all of the types, but when we look at the one and the eight, if a one were to intervene, it would be in the name of justice and of righteousness. Um, whereas an eight's motivation for intervening would be um, a lot of times I think eights uh, sometimes intervene on the behalf of others because of their extreme distaste for control or of being controlled. So many times when they see someone else um, in a position of, I guess what I would call the underdog, then eights um, a lot of times will choose to liberate. There are, of course, other times that because of their independence, they would choose not to. Um, but I think that more often than not, eights have less of a ceiling on their anger. So we say that um, with eight, nine, and one, which all have that anger piece, that um, nines are self-forgetting and that they are 
almost in denial of that anger, which manifests in like a stubborn, uh, I've heard it referred to as like a boulder in a stream. And that's how a nine's anger manifests in sort of that stubborn way. Um, and then we move on to um, one and how they respond, which is, of course, that boiling pot analogy where it's boiling in them and they know it's there, but they feel that social decorum, I must be right, and to keep the lid on. And then on the other end, we have an eight who uh, sees their rage as, um, it's almost, I, I think of the SX4 when I think of this with eight, which is that it's this totally shameless rage um, and that that pot is aggressively boiling over, which it, it many times is why, with Enneagram 8, why we see this wake of destruction, um, and why that is a theme for 8 and not for 1, and why um, sadism is a theme for 8 and not for 1, um, and many times why um, even 1s have, um, I've seen many times 1s have even um, this manifest physically in them through health issues, which um, have to do with um, a rigidness and a, um, a, I think you can even feel this about a one, in that it's like this rigidness, but it's this self-maintained control of themselves, even though the anger is there. Whereas um, with eight, we don't have that. There is none of that self-restraint. Um, it's much more... Um, yeah, uh, just reveling in the anger um, and not really not having any concern for what others think. Um, so yeah, I think those are some of the core differences between Enneagram 1 and Enneagram 8. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>